New York City. We're at the Minds and Money Conference, and I'm now joined by Jack Lifton, a business operations consultant. Jack, thank you so much for being with us today. You're welcome. So let's talk about why you say that we don't have enough cobalt, um, it's, and what's your solution for that? There, there's an absolute cap to the amount of cobalt that can be produced in the world, mm -hmm. because cobalt is produced as a byproduct of copper and nickel mining. So the best we can do is to hope that copper and nickel mining continues to grow right. and to recycle. We must recycle because metals don't wear out. If we can recover them instead of throwing them away, it's the only way we can ever keep up with the demand for something like cobalt. There's very little in the way of primary cobalt, a mine that would just be worked for cobalt. So first of all, it is, it is completely dominated by the economics of copper and yes. nickel. And, and so if either one of those is shut down, we, we lose cobalt. But in general, the world cobalt production last year was about 130,000 tons. Right. If you look at just the Chinese demand for cobalt, for EVs, in the year 2020, it's almost all of that. So clearly something has got to change. Mm -hmm. Now, we, the, the world uh, vehicle industry is basically committed to the cobalt type of battery because it, it, it will hold the most energy uh, per unit uh, weight right. and volume. Okay. And Quite frankly, there's an absolute cap on the amount that we do. I'm not a peak cobalt guy. I'm just telling you, in fact, the world is probably producing almost as much cobalt as it can ever produce. I see. So when I see people say, oh, I've, I've made a cobalt discovery in wherever, cobalt has been looked for for a very long time. We know where the cobalt is. I am not aware of any primary cobalt mine in the world, you know, where cobalt is the principal metal uh, recovered. I think I've been told in Morocco there's a small one, but that emphasizes the point that it's a non-existent thing. There really shouldn't be a cobalt boom. Okay. Uh, but I'll tell you something. In 1980, the the rare earth battery used, the rare earth magnet used at that time was called the samarium cobalt type. Cobalt skyrocketed in 1980 to $50 a pound. That's the equivalent today of $200 a pound. Right. Okay? Because of that, the car companies backed off mm -hmm. and they went to neodymium iron boron that the magnet used today. All right. The same thing's going to happen again. If cobalt prices get too high, they're going to interfere with the econ economics of electric vehicles. Yet, there isn't enough cobalt. Mm -hmm. so, I, I think it's in a, in my opinion, it's in a death spiral already. Right. So where would you be positioning uh, yourself? Where would you put your money into? People who engineer products from th these rare metals. A company that that is, let's say, in the cobalt space or the lithium space, mm -hmm. which is not vertically integrated, mm -hmm. is doomed because we can, you cannot sell these things as commodities. You have to add value right, right to the end. Right. And if you can produce a battery cathode grade cobalt or a, a rare earth uh, magnet less than the other guy, you're in business. Okay. 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 And you can't do it by simply mining the raw material. You have to vertically integrate. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at companies, and I, I noticed at this conference quite a few that I didn't know were as far along okay. in vertical integration. And I don't want to say, you want me to name one? <laughs> okay. Why not? Yeah, right. name us a well, company. Well, I, I was impressed by the Namaska lithium presentation because they're much further along than, than I knew, okay? Right. And they're on the right track. Okay. And if, if their cost out the door of their engineered uh, lithium product is, is competitive or less than the big boys, mm -hmm. they're in business. China uh, has the most demand, so number one in the world for cobalt. Um, what about China um, surpasses what we can do here in the U.S.? China already controls the processing of cobalt as well as the sourcing of cobalt. It's really too late for us to dominate this space. They're mm -hmm. buying companies. Mm -hmm. They're buying the, the production base of cobalt and the main, and today, 60% of all the engineering of cobalt products is done in China, 60%. So they're dominant. 
they, they have bought into the Democratic Republic of the Congo, which is the largest producer of cobalt on earth. They've bought cobalt assets in South America. Uh, that's, that's actually about where they are. And they've bought some assets in Australia where they right. exist. So the, there is no competition. A lot of people here think that they're going to supply China with lithium, graphite, cobalt. I don't think so. I think that day has passed and China's perfectly is competent and self-sufficient in, mm -hmm. in sourcing these materials. All right. Well, Jack, thank you so much for all the interesting insights. To learn more from the Minds and Money Conference from experts like Jack, be sure to visit smallcappower.com.